The research job is to understand how to get things to work in these environments. There's actually been very little technology deployment at all in most of these countries, with the exception of perhaps cell phones. So getting PCs to work, getting the power infrastructure to work, getting networking to work, these are actually core tasks that we have to solve. It's not that they don't need technology, it's that it's not in a form that suits the problems they have today. So one reason for doing this work at Berkeley is, is of course, the campus. Uh, my last time I checked, there's about 30 people on campus, uh, just faculty, not counting students, who focus on development in some way or another. It could be political science, it could be the environment or energy. And so there's a lot of local knowledge here about developing regions and how to have impact there. And so part of it is technical, but a lot of the places where we actually need help are the non-technical side, the cultural issues, the language issues, right? the economics that are involved. And so all together, you take these Berkeley strengths and the Intel strengths, this is a nice, healthy mix to address these issues. Our flagship project has been uh, eye care in India using telemedicine. And the, the, the technical innovation here really is using Wi-Fi as a way to get very long distance communication. In fact, we set the world record at about 373 kilometers, which is uh, more than 200 miles with a single link. So we can go quite long distances. In fact, we don't even need to go that far. So given this technology, we can actually connect rural villages with a high bandwidth link using Wi-Fi, which is a very low power, low cost solution, into the urban center. And working with the Air of an Eye Hospital, we've been able to set up a network of village health clinics where each clinic is kind of a one room, single nurse center that provides eye care for local inhabitants. And this could be a village of 10,000 or even a, a, an area of 50,000 patients that you know, essentially have no eye care today. And by having the center there, they can go to the center, they can meet with a the nurse, they can get glasses, and most importantly, they can use the video conference to meet with a doctor who is able to remain in the, in the central hospital. Uh, ideally, we'd have a doctor in every village. That's just not realistic in these environments. Uh, we're using this system about 3,000 times per month right now. So 3,000 doctor-patient video conferences. Another project we're working on that's in, in the healthcare space is to try and enable uh, essentially remote consultations for doctors in Ghana. And this would in fact work in other countries as well. But one of the problems we saw is that local doctors uh, tend to know basic medicine but don't know the specialties. Uh, actually I was in Rwanda and there's one x-ray reader in Rwanda. So if you need your x-ray evaluated, there's one guy that can do it and that's it. Where are all the other x-ray people? Well, they've left the country for, for better pay elsewhere. And this is a typical problem, that, that there's not many specialists in these areas. So the approach we're taking here is to actually use mobile devices, um, typically mobile internet devices, but disconnected. They could be cell phones, they could be small PCs, but they have to be mobile and self-powered. And we use those to record patient records and symptoms, even audio interviews of patients. Uh, and the local doctors do that partially for patient record keeping, but also so they can assemble a package, a kind of a case for this particular patient. And then when they need a specialist, what we're able to do is actually send that, that data packet of information overseas and get an overseas specialist. And what I like about this project is the, where we're getting these specialists to review these cases. Well, they're actually uh, Ghanaian doctors that live in the U.S because right, they want to give back to their home country and this is an easy way for them to do it. So even though they feel frankly somewhat guilty about having left a country that needs doctors, this allows them to apply their specialty to patients in Ghana in a very uh, easy and flexible way.